Hello and welcome to the episode 244 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. As usual, for a first of the month episode, we'll be covering stories from the Beatles' past, happened on the 1st of September, and those that happened during the month without a specific set date. Specifically, we'll focus on the filming of a live TV appearance, a return home, and the last time John met Dylan. 1st of September 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, had their 16th straight night engagement at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany, thus continuing their first residency in town. By this time, the lads had probably sampled the nightlife that the Reaper Bahan offered, with prostitutes, gangsters, transvestites, and plenty of amphetamines to keep performing throughout the night. Exactly one year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now a quartet with Pete Best still on drums and Paul McCartney on bass, performed twice at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, once for their usual lunchtime slot and once at night. On this date in 1962, instead, the Beatles and their new drummer, Ringo Starr, played the subscription rooms in Stroud for their second consecutive engagement in a JB promotion club. It was another attempt to play outside the usual Liverpool area and expand toward the south of England to get visibility where the important players of the British music establishment were active. 1963. The Beatles started their September at the Disbury Studio Centre in Manchester, where they were filmed for an appearance on ABC Television's Big Night Out. The lads had actually been asked to participate to the show for an earlier transmission, to be filmed on the 18th of August, but their increasingly busy schedule couldn't accommodate the request before today. Another sign of their ascent. Anyhow, after a morning rehearsal, the band mimed From Me To You, She Loves You and Twist and Shout in front of some 600 people. The show would be aired across most of the ITV network on the 7th of September, between 7.40 and 8.30 pm. During the month of September 1964, Beatles manager Brian Epstein bought the Mercy Beat newspaper, renaming it Music Echo. The new paper had a national focus and distribution, undoubtedly benefiting from Epstein's close relationship with the Beatles and other successful acts to gather some premier material for its reading public. 1st of September 1965, George Harrison and Paul McCartney attended a recording session for The Birds' new single, a cover of Dylan's The Times They Are Changing. Apparently, the birds were a bit uneasy trying to record the piece in front of the two Beatles and prefer stopping the session to have a chat. Later in the day, the four Beatles flew back to England from San Francisco after the end of their North American tour. The madness of the dates, the inanity of the questions of the endless press conferences, the growing distance between the band and the outside world, all alienated the band leaving them feeling cold about an experience that was worlds apart from the Cavern Club days, in which they could progress musically while on the stage. The negative mark left on the four will have repercussions in the following years. Before going on with the show, it's support time! Yes! Head to www.simonmas.com support and see what you can do to show me your love. Come on, if you've been following this far, don't I even deserve a mention on your socials? Be instrumental in the growth of our community, and only good things will follow. Thank you! On the 1st of September 1967, the Beatles and their publicist Tony Barrow met at Paul McCartney's house to discuss their future after Brian Epstein's death. Paul produced a rough plan for Magical Mystery Tour, and talked the band into starting the filming as soon as possible, postponing a plan to visit India to study Transcendental Meditation. It was terribly important for them to do something musical and show that they were not going to lose their head after the death of Epstein. The other three Beatles accepted. 
Paul's basic idea was simple, to produce a feature film every year, along with its soundtrack. Distributing the films would fill the gap left from the band's decision to stop touring, and could potentially award them with a much bigger profit that any tour could generate. For Magical Mystery Tour, it was decided that each Beatle was to take on two sections of the film, becoming responsible to think about its music and its comedy content. It was to be a psychedelic take on the old yellow bus tours that were so typical of the England of their youth. We will soon see that it won't run as smoothly as those countryside affairs. Exactly two years later, John Lennon invited Bob Dylan at his house, Tittenhurst Park, along with George Harrison. After watching him live on the previous evening, John tried to talk Dylan into recording a new song of his, called Turkey, but he was unsuccessful. Dylan, unimpressed with the song and the subject matter, decided to leave quickly, making excuses saying that his pregnant wife wanted to get some fresh air. It was the last time John Lennon and Bob Dylan ever met. Why, another episode is over. See you tomorrow to talk about more Beatles live action. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.